One of the major issues affecting women in Marsabit County is inadequate access to quality maternal care. On this episode of Health Digest, we tell you what one of the residents is doing to help change the county's maternal health indicators through the use of technology. As one travels across Marsabit County, you cannot fail to notice its sparse population and vastness of the semi-arid lands dotted with pockets of temporary homesteads compounded by cultural beliefs and unpredictable weather patterns. This vast county provides a distinct health challenge for its expectant mothers and their unborn babies. But one woman is seeking to turn the tide on this worrying health challenge through the use of technology. They say digital technologies can offer an opportunity to improve maternal health outcomes. Here in Moyale Sub County, a 40-year-old woman is bridging the gap of access to quality maternal health care services by linking pastoralists to healthcare workers through a GPS platform. What started as a dream in 2017 now holds a promising future for the county's maternal health indicators. Dahabu Galgalo, a medical laboratory scientist, says she had to swing into action to help curb preventable deaths that arose among women from her community due to lack of access to antenatal care. In 2015, there was a research that we did in this hospital just to establish what are mostly causes of maternal mortality. So through some data analysis, we came to establish that uh, most of these expectant mothers, these mothers who are dying, uh, they are from the pastoralist community. So these are the people who are keep moving with their animals uh, to search for pasture and water and some, sometimes this population they usually travel even at the extent to go to Ethiopia or even the side of Somalia and most of them they usually access the health service they travel more than 150 kilometers to get this uh, uh, clinic so they don't access the health care health care service through their findings, Dahabo and her team came up with a gadget that facilitates enhanced location of these women who ordinarily would miss out on life-saving antenatal care due to proximity to health facilities. A global positioning system, GPS technology, she tells me, was the ideal solution to help track these expectant women who ordinarily would move from one place to another in search of water and pasture, especially during this ongoing drought. The 80 percent of the population within Marsabit County are uh, pastoralists and within this community also uh, you can't get a sort of electricity network within this uh, community. So by using a the mobile mobile uh, the mobile uh, mobile uh, the the, the Okay. The mobile phone, yeah. By using the mobile phone, uh, you can't reach them. So that was the reason that we decided to come up with the GPS. So what about if we can able to give them the GPS tracking system so that we can monitor where they are. And uh, the mobile system, that is the GPS, uh, we, we, we came up with a sort of an innovation that uh, it can be acceptable. acceptable that is 100% acceptable within this uh, population. So the GPS that we came up with, it was, it was supposed to be small, uh, coin size, water power, uh, waterproof, and also solar, uh, solar power. The total number of beneficiary uh, that were able to benefit from this project were 237 expectant mother. So from these 237 expectant mothers, when we first took the baseline's uh, data to establish whether they have ever gone to clinic or whether they have ever uh, sort of uh, uh, ever gone to antenatal clinic to, to get that service, almost 78% they have never they have never attended this clinic in their previous 
pregnancy. Through the use of the GPS tracker, Dahabo and her team ensured these mothers got access to antenatal care. It connected them with health workers who brought some of these services closer to them while at the same time monitored their progress with the aim of having them deliver under the care of a skilled worker. With this tracking system, we can able to establish uh, the position where these mothers are. So it can make easy for healthcare workers at least to know the exact position of this population so that they can able to, to give them the antenatal service. With this one, at least we were able to increase the uptake up to 80%. From that zero up to 80%. So we noted uh, increase in uh, the uptake of antenatal care. We noted the uh, increase in also postnatal care and also uh, partly immunization within that population for two years. The GPS device, she explains, is fitted onto a culturally designed beaded wrist bracelet for acceptance by the community. It relays signals to satellites, which sends the signal back to Gilgalo and her team via a web-based application. Hawu Mohammed, a mother of four from Kelelewa area in Marsabit County, was among the first volunteers in the Habus project. It took a lot of convincing and sensitization to have her participate in the project. She used it for a period of two years as Dahabo and her team endeavored to have these mothers also avail their babies for the vital childhood vaccines. <laughs> Marsabit County is ranked among those with a high birth rate compared to the national rate. Around 2017, its birth rate was at 5, higher than the national rate that was at 3.9. At the time, its maternal mortality rate was at 1,127 deaths per 100,000 live births, according to the 2014 Demographic Health Survey report. Despite the high numbers, most women still delivered at home, increasing their risk to childbirth-related complications, according to the Moyale Subcounty Referral Hospital Superintendent, Dr. Ibrahim Kontoma. The uptake was low. The uptake was low. There are cultural issues around here. Uh, people tend to lean towards uh, traditional bus attendants where they are being attended by uh, old ladies. Uh, they don't mainly prefer uh, male skilled uh, bus attendants. Eh? So that's why they usually prefer to deliver at home. The tracking device, he says, has played a significant role in improving the sub-county's maternal health indicators as more women now deliver in health facilities. It was meant to increase the access and utilization of resources, I mean the utilization of health care. So it has an impact in improving accessibility. And then it also has an impact in uh, reducing uh, the four delays the four delays in, uh, you know, in health that can cause uh, maternal mortality or maternal morbidity and mortality. So it has a lot of impact. Uh, it creates, uh, it improves, you know, uh, the access. You know, we are talking about uh, universal health care. So universal health care is about access. So this particular project improves uh, accessibility by reaching down to people who are on the ground. We are at around 60 uh, percent with seven track. I think there is an improvement among the populations which was done it was at 78 percent. So there is an improvement in, uh, in uh, ANC uptake to increase the number of visits. And then, you know, the, the number of visits has also has, uh, an impact on the health outcomes because there will be an early detection of uh, pregnancy-induced 
hypertension, infections. So it increases outcome. So from 60 to 78 uh, percent, that is an, an it, it is a project which has an impact on our outcome. Yes, maternal outcome. The facility conducts at least 200 deliveries per day and over 30 cesarean section deliveries, making it a relatively busy facility that not only serves residents of the sub-county, but those from the neighboring Wajia County and even Ethiopia. The GPS tracker also increased immunization coverage of children apart from boosting skilled deliveries and early screening for pregnancy-related complications. We didn't pick the, the GPS from them. At least they were able to keep it and we are able to follow these expectant mothers, these mothers also uh, for, for the uptake of the immunization for their kids. So at least for two years we are able to use within this population. With intervention of uh you know, we have a com intervention at community level, eh? community health workers. Eh? At least we will be able to reduce maternal mortality. But what is uh, still very high is the neonatal mm. and perinatal mortality rate. So we have perinatal mortality rate is very high still. So one of the contributing factors is home delivery. Mm. And uh, people who come, you know, to hospital late when you cannot be able to intervene. Yes. Tracking the mothers has not also been a walk in the park for the laboratory scientists, given its proximity to the neighboring Ethiopia. The women sometimes cross over in search of pasture and water, making it hard for the harbor to take the services to where they are located. Sometimes they usually wear the GPS, they cross towards the border side, that is the Ethiopia. So because we are from Kenya, we cannot able to cross the other side uh, to... to to, to, to give them the service. So the other thing also that uh, right now we are working on is to, to come up with a small GPS so that it can be comfortable uh, to be used. So uh, the other thing is about uh, for healthcare workers, they can able to see the position of these expectant mothers so, in order for them to give them the service. Galgalo and her team are now looking to improve the GPS tracker to include an SOS button that will enable swift response to the expectant mother's needs in the event of an emergency. Among other features, they intend to improve in the tracker to make it more efficient. So uh, the GPS, the, imagina the imaginary that we have, uh, the GPS that we want to use within the community, it's supposed to be sort of a, a, a small, sort of a coin size. Uh, it needs to be a, uh, it needs to be a solar powered and also waterproof. Uh, so that at least it can be flexible for this expectant mother to use. But the GPS which was available in the market that we are able to get, uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't of that, uh, uh, the, uh, the quality that we want. So the GPS that uh, we are able to get from the market was this one, which was somewhat big and uh, also uncomfortable for this expectant mother. And uh, because this is a pastoralist community and most of the time they don't usually accept something which is out of their culture. So we were able to come up with uh, bracelets, which is uh, uh, the beads. So with these beads, at least even for a pilot project, it was 100% uh, acceptable uh, because of the the way the, the bracelet was done. So what we have been doing is that we put the GPS inside the, the pocket for, for these bracelets and then from there we, we can able to give this expectant mothers to wear it. So we were able, even though it, it's uncomfortable or something big, we are able to, to use it for two years. So because these women know the importance why this needs to be done, uh, the way we did the sensitization, uh, at least they accepted it and they used it for two years. So we were able to follow this expectant mother from the first trimester uh, until they deliver. 
even as Dahabo seeks to prevent most of these maternal deaths in her community, Kenya generally has made strides in promoting maternal care. At least 7 out of every 10 women had 4 NC visits for their most recent live births or stillbirth, according to the 2022 Kenya Demographic Health Survey report. In Marsabit, seven out of every ten expectant women have had at least four ANC visits as nine out of ten received antenatal care from a skilled provider, according to the report. Similarly, six out of every ten delivered in a health facility. Overall, similar interventions like the Habos will go a long way in ensuring timely management of expectant women as this can make the difference between life and death for the women as well as the newborn. Gloria Milimu, KTN News.